in patients that do not have skin melanomas or they have other types of melanomas such as acral melanomas, mucosal melanomas, where there aren't as many BRAF mutations, you can't really rely on those targeted agents and you use immune therapy. So immune therapy has the advantage of having more of ability to produce a durable response, or that's traditionally what we think. Basically what these immune therapies do is they teach our immune system to recognize cancer and destroy cancer. And the idea is that if these immune therapies are successful, these little uh, soldiers of the immune system called T cells will stay in our body for the rest of our life and hopefully provide long lasting protection. And so uh, in immunotherapy and melanoma, we've seen an explosion of new molecules, new drugs that have been uh, approved for use. Uh, we typically think of the PD-1 antibodies, which are very well tolerated, uh, work 30 to 40% of the time, um, and uh, are very easy to take. Patients uh, have very limited side effects. And then there's a drug called ipilimumab or Uravoy, which worse, works less frequently, but again has proven time and time again that if those patients are benefiting, they are potentially alive and not relapsing of their melanoma, or not dying from their melanoma at three years, five years years. Um, so again, highlighting the potential for a really long lasting benefit from these immune therapies. So there is an ongoing debate in melanoma on which therapy you should use first. So if you have a patient with BRAF mutated melanoma, should you use immune therapy first or should you use targeted therapy first? We ultimately don't know the answer to that question. There are some uh, two specific clinical trials that are currently ongoing both in the US as well as in Europe that are trying to answer that question by basically testing sequence. So one group of patients gets the immune therapy and then the targeted therapy upon relapse and the other group gets basically the opposite approach. And those two clinical trials I think will be instrumental in answering the question of which therapy is really ideal in the first line setting, but at this point we don't know the answer to that.